The third time is a charm. And we hope that the charm on March 14 will help Starship actually reach orbit. Of course, reaching orbit is not the only highlight of the next flight, so stay tuned if you don't want to miss the breaking news. First of all, SpaceX is aiming to fly a new trajectory. The first two tests called for Starship to complete nearly one orbit before re-entering and splashing down near Hawaii about 90 minutes after liftoff from the company's Starbase complex in South Texas. Now the gigantic vehicle is targeted for a splashdown in the Indian Ocean nearly 65 minutes after liftoff. This new flight path enables us to attempt new techniques like in space engine burns while maximizing public safety, the company stated. Neither previous launch completed their profile, with the first Starship slash Super Heavy vehicle destroyed a few minutes after liftoff in April 2023 and the second in November 2023, suffering separate failures of the Super Heavy booster and Starship upper stage. However, those failures provided SpaceX with many precious lessons. The company also said that the third flight test aims to build on what we have learned from previous flights while attempting a number of ambitious objects, including the successful ascent burn of both stages, opening and closing Starship's payload door, the first ever relight of a Raptor engine while in space, and a controlled re-entry of Starship. That means not only does it have enough velocity to reach orbit, but Starship must also help it survive to re-entry. Last but not least, SpaceX also confirmed it will perform a propellant transfer test on the flight, moving propellant from one tank to another within Starship during the upper stage's coast phase. That test, supported by a NASA Tipping Point Technology Demonstration Award, is a step towards future tests where one Starship vehicle will transfer methane and liquid oxygen propellants to another Starship in orbit. That capability is essential to Starship's use as a lunar lander for NASA's Human Landing System program. One Starship would serve as a propellant depot in low Earth orbit, filled by subsequent flights of tanker Starships. The Starship lunar lander would then launch, be refueled by the depot, and go to the moon. A SpaceX official said in January that 10-ish refueling flights would be needed to support a single HLS mission. The pace of Starship development to support the first crewed Artemis landing, no earlier than September 2026, has been a source of tension. Of course, it absolutely concerns me because we need them to launch multiple times, Jim Free, NASA Associate Administrator, said in an interview broadcast by the CBS News program 60 Minutes on March 3, when asked about the first two Starship launches. However, he said he still believed the landing could take place on the current schedule, even after being told of an interview SpaceX chief executive Elon Musk gave in January where Musk said a human landing on the moon would take place in less than five years, which would suggest a potential delay of up to two years. My view of that, Free said, is that we have a contract with SpaceX that says they're going to launch our crew at the end of 2026. NASA's Aerospace Safety Advisory Panel which highlighted the complexities of the Artemis III mission in its annual report published in January, said at its February 28 public meeting that NASA and SpaceX were working well together on the HLS version of Starship. What we heard from the team this time was that there's a lot of good learning going on with the flight tests of Starship, said William Bray, a member of the panel. There's goodness there between SpaceX and the NASA teams as we evolve forward. Okay, now let's move on to the question of what Starship Flight 3 will be like. Compared to the countdown in previous tests, the countdown procedure this time has changed a little bit, given that it will be 45 minutes late, and loading the ship will take place before loading the booster. Indeed, the countdown will start an hour and 15 minutes before the launch, when the SpaceX flight director conducts a poll and verifies the propellant load. About 53 minutes before liftoff, the ship must complete the liquid oxygen load and afterward. It's turn to load the ship's fuel load, liquid methane. 42 and 41 minutes before liftoff, we will witness the booster being loaded with oxygen and fuel, respectively. In short, we load liquid oxygen in advance. Then we load the fuel, and the ship will be loaded before the booster. At about the 20th minute, the Raptor engine begins to chill on booster and ship. About three and a half minutes before liftoff, the booster propellant load will complete, followed by ship propellant load, complete at two minutes and 50 seconds. Near the end of the countdown, everything seems to get faster and requires split-second precision. At 30 seconds before liftoff, the SpaceX flight director verifies go for launch. In 10 seconds before liftoff, 
the flame deflector will be activated, and in the final three seconds, the Raptor ignition sequence will begin. So, if all goes to plan, excitement will be guaranteed, meaning we will see a launch with all the interesting things. It is hot staging, Starship Raptor ignition, and stage separation at 2 minutes and 44 seconds after liftoff. To achieve this stage, the vehicle must undergo max Q, moment of peak mechanical stress on the rocket, at 52 and second and booster mecho. Most engines cut off at 2 minutes and 42 seconds. After the success stage separation, B-10 will start a boost back burn in 2 minutes and 55 seconds, which will last until 3 minutes and 50 seconds. Booster is transonic at 6 minutes and 36 seconds, and the landing burn later will occur from 6 minutes and 46 seconds to 7 minutes and 4 seconds. Referring to the ship, it's time for the magic to happen. At 8 minutes and 35 seconds, the Starship engine will cut off to prepare for the payload door to open at 11 minutes and 56 seconds. Following that, the ship will perform the propellant transfer at 24 minutes and 31 seconds, and until 28 minutes and 21 seconds, the payload door will close. The timeline at 40 minutes and 46 seconds is spent for Raptor in space relight. Starship's journey will end with the re-entry at 49 minutes and 5 seconds and an exciting landing at 1 hour, 4 minutes, and 39 seconds. Those are the plans for the upcoming test, and remember that all times are approximate. However, everyone hopes that there won't be much error because SpaceX has geared up very carefully for Flight 3, including upgrading both the vehicle and orbital tank farm. We're just a week away from the special mid-March event, and SpaceX has completed nearly all of the major hardware milestones in preparation for the test. The company recently performed a critical fueling test this month at its Starbase facility near Boca Chica, Texas. During the test, over 10 million pounds of liquid methane and liquid oxygen were pumped into the rocket. Starship Flight 3, preparing for launch, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk wrote in a post on X accompanying photos of the fueling test. Nevertheless, SpaceX still has one more hurdle to overcome, which is the FAA's launch license. The tweet on March 6 also noted that pending regulatory approval. Recently, the Administrator for Commercial Space Transportation at the FAA, Kelvin Coleman, said the agency was in the process of trying to facilitate the Starship launch licensing process. From a regulatory standpoint, the timeline for the second week of March sounds about right. He shared, this is again confirmed by Christian Davenport, space reporter at the Washington Post. The FAA is very close to approving the license modification for the third SpaceX Starship launch attempt, I'm told. It can be said that SpaceX Starship is on the threshold of a new level where it is able to demonstrate the capability needed for launching satellites and going to the moon. After this test flight, SpaceX will further promote upgrading this vehicle and further shorten the distance between flights to complete nine flights by 2024 as planned. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you want to explore more aspects of the world's most powerful rockets and the world of rockets in general, here is a selection of deeper dive videos for you. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.